the name is Brandon Gross. And we are the Game Changers. Designers, creatives alike. We are in a world that runs on value. Our next designs will be the shiniest. Our next animation will be the most buttery. Ladies and gentlemen, Game Changers, let the games begin. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Editor X Live with me, your host, Brandon Gross, and I'm super excited to have all of you all here today. Today is Friday, and that means the weekend <laughs> is tomorrow. With that said, I'm super excited to say hi to all of you guys, and first off, well, there's gonna be many first off, but I'm super excited to dive into today's challenge, which is reimagining Tesla's website in Editor X from scratch, and we're gonna have a lot of fun with grids today. With that said, I do wanna say hi to you guys. What's going on, Lisa? Good morning to you too. We have coffee and we're ready to learn. I too have coffee, but it's off to the side of my desk. Let's dive in. So we have some house cleaning items to dive into before we go any further, and then we'll get right into our challenge. So let's do it. Switch to my screen over here. For those of you who are watching either now for the first time or watching after the fact, do make sure to join in with us on these challenges. And to do that, you wanna to go to editorx.com and start now and sign up for free so you can follow along with our challenges. And on top of that, today's challenge Actually, before we, I'm so excited about today's challenge, I keep trying to like go into it. But for those of you who want to download today's starter file assets, you guys can go to the link in the description to download those. I've listened to you guys and I've given you the exact photos you guys need rather than design files. So you can go down in the description, click the Dropbox link, and download all of the photo assets of what we're of really all the photos that we're going to use in today's project. And on top of that, if you haven't already, please also join our Discord. A lot of you guys, Alicia, Lorraine, Dima, a lot of you all in the chat have utilized the Discord beautifully. I'm so thankful that you guys are dropping your questions. You guys are trying out Editor X and finding things. And that way we can help you each and every step of the way to become better and more proficient in Editor X. So with that said, Discord is a place where you can access me, the Editor X team, and also just get notified when we're going to be do doing new and upcoming challenges, what our challenge is going to be. You can also ask questions and ask questions. Basically, this is the one-stop shop for announcements of our weekly challenges, what's gonna happen, when is it gonna happen, and basically a resource for you all to get better in Editor X and uh, drop any questions that you have. So. Be a part of the community, join Discord if you haven't. With that said, house cleaning things over. Let's dive in to today's challenge. So, today's challenge, oh, I'm so excited about this because grids is something that a lot of you guys have been asking about. Grids, containers, sections, how does this all work? Um, and today we are literally going to be doing the most with our grids and making um, a Tesla site all the way from like the last last couple days from desktop to mobile this puppy is really beautiful and i actually will share this with you guys after the stream in our discord so you guys can check out the website and see um just how nice and responsive it is it's very simple so with that said let's go ahead and get started so i'm going to go to my pages here and <laughs> as you can see i already have like a ton of pages um but i'm going to go add new page and i'm going to do tesla home three and that's where we're going to start and as you can see this header is a master um, we're just going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch so i can show you guys what's up lisa says hey guys lorraine says hi lisa loved your design yes you guys i'm so happy that you guys have been showcasing your design work in challenges and just to bring that up um and you know give some love to the people who've been in the chat and sharing their work each and every challenge that we have, you guys, I also wanna give this caveat, you guys can either submit your challenge that day or each challenge per month is two weeks. So if you guys really want to work on that challenge, you guys have two weeks to submit essentially any design challenge that you want. But obviously uh, you're gonna have more chances to win if you're submitting these challenges each and every day and it's better practice for you guys. So 
in the feedback section in challenges if you guys are wondering how to submit your work we'll talk about this after the fact but we constantly give reminders to you how and when to submit your projects for each challenge so uh, shout out to all of you in the challenge demo geek girl lv <laughs> lorraine and uh tay <laughs> latex excellent work guys and i can't wait to see um more cool things from you all so all right so what you guys are going to have is you guys are going to have a menu when you create a blank page here but for me i'm just going to go ahead and make my own menu i'm just going to create another section a blank one and i'm going to create my own menu out of the previous section so i'm just going to scroll this up I'm probably going to give it, uh, I'm going to give it a height of 80 pixels. And while I'm doing this, what do you guys have planned for the weekend? Let me know in the chat. All right. So I have my 80 pixels for our menu here and I'm just going to, I'm going to start off with that. So first things first, I'm going to go to my inspector. I'm going to go to design and I am going to pick a dark color. And if you guys want the hex codes of exactly what I'm using, I'm using 181818. You guys can just use black if you'd like. But uh, I basically took the colors, I believe, from the Tesla website and um, I'm using them here. So next, what I'm going to do as well is I'm also, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna duplicate this because I do want to have a, um, a reference basically so I can go back and forth between what we're creating and what has already been created as a reference. So I'm gonna, what we need to do now is we need to create two menus, okay? And we're gonna add our logo, the two menus, and if you guys can see this, I know it's very, very faint, but we're also going to add a grid to our section here. We're gonna do three parts. So that's what's next. So I'm gonna click this menu up top here I'm going to apply grid and I'm going to do a three by one. So we get a nice little section for our logo, a nice little section for menu two and a nice little section for menu three or excuse me, <laughs> menu one and menu two. There we go. So from here, what I'm going to do is I am and I think maybe it was either Lisa or Lorraine who was asking this about the difference between padding and margin yesterday. Um, I'm going to actually add padding to our section here. So I'm going to go to layout and the difference between margin is that margin is you're giving space to a uh, to the outside of an element where padding is you are giving space to the inside of an element. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give 25 pixels of padding to the left on the inside left of this container or this section and I'm going to do 25 pixels on the right just like that. And let's see, I am going to now, I'm going to grab my logo. So I'm going to go to quick add. I'm going to go to image. And if you did, you know, you were a little smart and you have an SVG, right? You have an SVG of your logo. Go ahead and use that. <laughs> but uh, we have the PNG of Tesla's logo um, prepared for you guys today. So uh, we're just going to have to, we're going to have to deal with that. I'm sorry. Lorraine says, going to see Snow Patrol tonight. That is what's up. <laughs> what is Snow Patrol? Out of curiosity, Lisa says, I'm boring, just going, just working on web design this weekend since hubby will be working all weekend long. Hey, listen, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. We got to, you know, we're out here mastering Editor X. So more power to you. I, I will be also in your shoes. <laughs> so I'm just bringing in the Tesla logo. I basically just scaled it. And I do want to squeeze this area down just a little bit. I don't want Tesla to squeeze though. And the reason it's squeezing is because we have it fluid at a width of 21%. We want it fixed and we're going to give our logo a fixed width up. Actually, before I even do that, I'm going to just drag this. And reason being is because I don't want to have to deal with the numbers. <laughs> I think that's fine. We're going to go to fixed and it should keep the exact digits for this size for me. And I am just going to make sure this is centered in that area and down. And you know what? You know, we might figure we might want this leaned up against this. We'll figure that out later. We'll just do that for now. And just to make sure it is 100% there, we're going to lean it all the way to the left using our alignment tools. 
Lorraine says chasing cars. Is that what is that what Snow Patrol is? <laughs> I had no idea what it was. Um, all right, so now we have our two. We're gonna add two menus, and I'm very simply gonna go to my plus here, and I'm gonna go to menu and search, and I'm gonna grab two menus here. So I'm gonna just grab this basic one, just like this. I'm gonna drop it, and first things is because we can't see it right now, so I'm gonna change the text to white so we can actually read what's happening here. And I'm gonna sprawl this out. Now, what is, you guys are not gonna have all these menu items at the beginning. So what you need to do, and I'll go ahead and do it with you, is you're going to need to add all of these pages. So I highly recommend you go to add page and you just add one page at a time. Model S, Model 3, Model X, Model Y, and you just make them. You don't have to design them. They're literally all blank web, uh, web pages for this project, for me at least. And so I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna just delete this page that I just made. I'm gonna go back to Tesla 3, and I'm gonna show you how to make a new menu. So I'm just going to click this previous menu, manage menu, drop this down, and I'm going to manage site menus, which means basically this is a catalog of all the menus that I'm using throughout the site. <laughs> Lorraine says chasing cars, that's a song. Listen, all I do is I stay in my room and I design, guys. Listen, I, it, based on the, my background, literally my background of the photos that are of what you're watching, you can tell I don't get out much. So <laughs> if you guys are bringing up something, you're like, Brandon, what, you know? Uh, where have you been? Why don't you know this thing? That, that's why I, I barely leave this room constantly studying. But I will have to look up chasing cars after this, Lorraine. Thank you. Um, let's see. So I'm going back to menus. I'm going to add a new menu just so I can show you guys how this works. So I'm going to do a tutorial menu. That's going to call it. And as you guys can see, it automatically, the rest of the menus disappear and it leaves me with basically the home of what is considering, of what EditorX is considering the home of this website we're making. And because Tesla Home 2 is what we've set the home of this website to be, it's automatically brought this here. Um, we don't want that. So we're gonna just add new items here, site pages. We're gonna untick that and we are literally just gonna this is all the list of all of the other web pages that we've made and we're just going to select all those all the way to solar panels and hit apply <laughs> guys leave me alone i'm serious it's, you know i guess when we're out here trying to to figure out you know the powers that editor x holds for us you know you stay inside and you try to master this puppy all right so next things what we have menu one i'm gonna make we're gonna make a secondary menu so all i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna do control i'm gonna select this menu control d to duplicate it see alicia you know what i'm talking about <laughs> we're, we're homebodies we 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 do our best and so i'm gonna go to manage menu again and i'm going to go to second menu and of course actually i'm gonna do it with you i'm gonna do it with you so I'm gonna create a new menu. So this time add new menu and I'm gonna do tutorial menu two. Perfect. And so as you can see, it resets my menu and I am going to add new menus to this site pages. And now I'm gonna add the rest of what we want in our secondary menu, which is just shops, account and menu. Hit apply and ta-da, there we go. So now we have our secondary menu. And I'm just gonna squeeze this in as much as I can and make this left align and centered. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Make sure this is centered. All right. And right aligned. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure that these are docked to our right. This is docked to our right, I believe, yes and this should be docked to the left, perfect. So this is our menu. We're at good speed, we're feeling good. How are you guys feeling in the chat? And while you guys are doing that, I'm gonna take a quick little sip of my coffee that I have dwindling and becoming less hot on the side of my desk. 
I'm gonna let you guys breathe. I've been talking nonstop. I'll give you guys a good breather. Lorraine says, so great that you can create multiple menus. Exactly. And you can even do this so easily with the footer menus too. It's really easy. All right. So now let's move into our section. This is the part that I'm so excited about. You guys are gonna see how crazy and how, comp not complicated, how we can use something so simple as grids and make something so cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my section here and I am going to have it as, let's see. We might set it to auto for beginning and uh, to begin with and our minimum height, we might do 100 VH. For right now, we're you know this we're testing this, or maybe we just we'll just do uh, 800 pixels. Lisa says, "Great, love the way you teach, Brandon. <laughs> this is how we do. We entertainment design is. You guys are coming from multiple things: excitement, conversation, and learning. All right. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply a grid to our only section. So so far, I want to show you guys like how simple our setup is here." We have section one, which is our menu, and I'm gonna rename this menu. And we just have our footer. Like it's, it's pretty simple so far. And inside of our menu, we have, uh, I'm gonna name this menu two. I'm gonna name this menu one. All right. And I'm just gonna name this logo. Perfect. All right, so next up, we are going to select our section here, apply grid. All we're gonna do is a two by one. And guys, I can't, I'm just smiling because I, I just thought this was so cool. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys build with this. So what we're gonna do first is on this left side, is I am going to, let's see how we built it over here. It really doesn't matter, but I'm trying to follow um, what I made over here as close as possible. Okay, so I did make a container. So we are going to quick add. We're gonna create a container and we are going to scale it over here. And now we're going to create grids on this container. First things first, I am going to take off the background here. Actually, I might keep the background for now so you guys can see the distinction of what we have selected. Uh, Laney says, what is the real difference between auto and min height and width? That's a really good question. So I, in my understanding, if we go back to this, cause I'm assuming that's why you asked that question. Why is Brandon's height auto and why is the min height 80 or 800? So height, I, and I'll explain this a little bit later because you'll see why I made this decision. It's something that I learned yesterday um, and that the editor X team really helped me out on. <laughs> but essentially this is saying, hey, this section at a minimum should be at least 800 pixels. But if I don't have this, let's say it's just, let's just say it's uh, nothing. I wonder if I can zero this out. So it's at none. Basically the height is dependent on what is inside it. So let me see if I can change this to and this might take us off track just a little bit, guys. But if I do 200 pixels and I guess it does not. Let's see. All right, I guess I guess not. I'll show you, I'll talk about it in the context of where it helped me solve a problem that I fell into later towards the end of this project. It'll make a little bit more sense. So let me just back up a little bit. I, you, I was, you guys were about to send me into a rabbit hole. <laughs> let, let me back up. All right, so let's go in here. We have our container inside of our first section on the left side of our grid. I'm gonna apply another grid to this and I'm gonna do a three. I might do a four vertical grid here. So I have room up here and I'm just going to move these things where I want them and what you, are going to see me do is I'm basically making a grid for each type of content. So we have a title here, we have a subhead here, and we have space for our buttons down here. So this is one, two, three, four sections. So we have our title section. 
I'm gonna pull, let's see, I'm gonna make one more. I'm gonna change grid layout. And I'm going to go to advanced dev mode. I'm gonna add one more, one more row. All right, so we're gonna have a section for our title right here, our subhead. And also, to uh, back to you, Laney, I very rarely, very rarely use minimum height. That's why I can't give you like an exact answer, though I can give you how I used it to help me with the problem that I had. So a lot of the stuff that we're covering in these challenges are the fundamentals that I feel really good with. And um, however, you can get basic, you can create basically anything in EditorX with about um, understanding just the fundamentals. And the other things that you guys, there's a lot you can do within EditorX, like you can actually use code to your benefit in EditorX and things of that nature. We're trying not to dive into that very much yet because it muddies the waters in terms of how designers and how we create things and how we're comfortable creating things, how we can do what we do well in EditorX without really having to touch code numbers and things like that. So trying to stay away from that, but <laughs> uh, we will try to where it's contextually, where it's important, we'll dive into it, which is a little bit later today. All right, so we have our section for our t uh, title, subhead, and then our buttons down here. Perfect. Uh, right about there. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I want to add an image to this container. So I'm gonna go to image. And if you guys remember from earlier this week, I want, this is going to be our car. So I'm gonna change this to our first Tesla car. And if you guys remember, if I try to scale this and we are in between two sections, it will only scale to that. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this car through all of the sections just like this, then hit my enlarge button. So it's really in the background. Okay. From here, I am going to click on my container, three dots, quick add, and I'm going to do a title. And I'm going to plop that right here. And let's see, I'm going to just steal the words here so I don't have to type them. So we're going to do model X. We're going to grab our Gotham. I believe it's Gotham medium for right now. And we're going to play with, let's do 45 pixels. Maybe we'll do 55. See how that feels. We're going to center this, edit text, center align, center it in this area. Good. I'm going to duplicate it, control D or command D if you're on Mac. I'm going to type plaid and we're going to bring this down to about 22 pixels. Perfect. And I'm going to squeeze that right in this section and I'm going to make sure that's centered there as well. And now I'm going to grab my buttons. So I'm going to just go to my plus. I'm going to go to buttons and I'm going to drag out two circle buttons. Uh, we'll rock with these. So I'm going to pull this out. One, two. And I'm going to make sure I need, I'm going to go to design. It kind of is boxy a little bit. So I'm going to go to my corners here and just make sure that these are maxed out. So we still have a rounded button. And actually before I mess with these here, watch this. So we're going to make another container and we're going to put it in this section right here. So we have this grid right here and we're going to drop it just like this. So I'm going to right click on my container first. Let's see, make sure my container is selected. Three dots, quick add container. And I'm gonna squeeze this and you'll see why exactly I'm doing this. I'm gonna fill that up. Apply grid, two by two or two by one. And now I'm gonna decrease the background of this and I am going to drop our button right in here and I am going to right align it so it touches just the center here. And I'm gonna give it a, let's see, we're gonna do 25 pixels. Maybe we'll give it 50 pixels. So I've docked it and I've given it a essentially 50 pixels of margin 
on the right here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to a, another button. I'm gonna hit Control D. I'm gonna pull this over to this other side. I am going to make sure it is centered in that place. I'm gonna do 50 pixels of margin on the left. So now we have an equal distance amount of space, 50 pixels on this side from the center of this container and same thing for this side. And we have them docked. Now, what I do wanna do is I'm gonna change, we're gonna do, we're gonna change one of these buttons here. So I'm gonna click our first left one. We're gonna do background of our, we're gonna make this black. Our text is gonna be white. We're gonna double click in here change text and we are going to say custom orders or custom order I believe and existing inventory on the other one existing inventory all right perfect and let's see I think we're, we're, we're doing pretty good guys let me just double check this here I think I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger how are you guys feeling in the chat my tongue was telling me I was uh, I was running a little a little fast there. But how are we feeling? You guys tracking? You guys following? How do you feel so far? All right, so we are very good on desktop for the left-hand side of what we have here. Now for the right side. Okay, and we are going to drag another, just like we did with the right, or the left, rather. We are going to quick add, make sure we're selecting our section here, yep. And we are going to add container, like that, boom, extend. And now we have, Lamy says we're good. All right, we're tracking. So what we're gonna do here is if you guys see this, all right, glad Lamy and Lisa are feeling good. So in this, we have a section and inside our section, I'm actually gonna to go to my layers here so you can see. I have one section that has two containers, one for the left, one for the right. In the right hand side, we have multiple uh, containers as you guys can see these, uh, can see this. I basically have multiple um, we basically put a container, we added more grids, and now we have <laughs> more containers and more grids inside them, if that makes sense. All right. all right. I'm glad we're all tracking. So I'm gonna apply a grid. I am going to do a three by three here. And we are going to start off with, what should we start off with? We're gonna start off with this. This is super, this is super simple. So. I am going to right click into this, quick add, and container. I'm gonna drag this over here, I'm gonna pull this in, and then scale it. And then this container, we're gonna apply a grid. <laughs> we're gonna do a one by three. So we get nice three grids here. One, two, three, and I think we need one more. Yep, we're gonna add one more in here. We're gonna change grid layout, advanced mode, and I'm gonna hover on this left-hand side here where I get my pluses, add row. Perfect. So now I can manipulate this for basically areas that I wanna put content. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do text or a title, a paragraph, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a, basically a, a CTA. So what we're gonna do here first is I'm going to steal this just control D, I'm gonna pull this over here. Decrease the size a little bit. We're gonna make sure that we left align it. And let's see, what does this need to say? Model X. Well, actually, you know what? It probably isn't Model X, it's probably Model S. Um, but we'll, we'll start off with this. Up next, we're gonna go ahead and add a paragraph. And there we go. Sometimes, if you guys notice, when you if you ever right click and you try to add something and it doesn't appear, sometimes it lands in an odd place in Editor X. Um, and you, all you have to do, if you have your container selected and that's where you added it, just use your alignment tools to center it to 
the area in which you tried to add it. It'll, it'll come into view. It's a quick little tip that's helped me out a little bit. Um, I am going to steal this content here so I don't have to write that out again. Let's make sure I copy that. Adrian, question, how do you make your content in text scale across viewpoints? Or can you lead me to a video where you've discussed this? Adrian, no, that's a really good question. I'll talk about that a little bit today. And it really depends also, I'm gonna, there is no right answer when it comes to this stuff. Though I will show you how to make your text scale. Um, let me see, let me reread that. How do you make your content in text scale across viewpoints? Okay. Well, I'll try to answer that in the context of or in the context of this project. So, I will. And there's a lot of things we actually have to make responsive in this. So just sit back, relax, and we might actually get to it. So thanks for asking that question, Adrian. All right. Up next, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna duplicate. First off, I'm gonna change this. We're gonna do Gotham. We'll do. We'll do that. And then I'm gonna duplicate this, Control D. And what I actually wanna do down here is I want to make, I wanna make sure first, this is learn more. This is our CTA. And from here, I want to add I'm going to do another quick ad. I'm going to do maybe it's an image. Let's do this first. I'm going to I'm going to get an editor X uh, icon. So I'm going to go to decorative and I'm going to try to look for arrows. So I'm going to just go to arrows. I'm going to go to more arrows and I get a nice selection from Wix in regards to arrows. So let's see. Which arrow should I use? Hmm, maybe we'll mess with this one. And I do need to rotate it. So let's see. In my mind, let me see. I remember there was a way to rotate things, but my mind is gone a little bit foggy here, guys. Let's see. Give me a moment. Here we go. So three blue dots, rotate or flip. I'm just gonna flip horizontally. There you go. Easy day. And so I'm gonna try to get this centered here. I'm gonna select both, holding shift, alignment tools, and just using my horizontal align piece. And I'm gonna select both of these and place in container. And from here, another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to, I want to create a container that has a half and half almost. So the container that I just created, I want to apply a grid, a two by one. And I want the left side to be four, and I'm gonna edit this, not the text. <laughs> I'm gonna edit the container. Let me go to advanced mode. And I want one side, this left side here, to be for the text. And I want this right side to be for the arrow. So I'm gonna click this arrow. I'm gonna make sure it's centered. Well, first off, let me go ahead and scale this puppy. And I do want it centered in this particular, there we go. So now we have a container that holds both of these. And we have the right side for the arrow, left side for the text. Now this helps when we start doing, um, when things start getting smashed when it comes to responsive. So Adrian, this is gonna go more towards your question in a little bit. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna make sure everything is aligned here. I'm gonna select all this stuff. One, two, hold on guys. Container, paragraph, there we go. I'm gonna use my alignment tools, left align, perfect. 
All right, so that's one section done. That's probably, we really only need this portion done to get this one automatically done. And uh, everything else is pretty much a breeze. Then we have responsive things to get into. And we're doing pretty good on time. <laughs> we still have 30 minutes. All right, so next piece, we are gonna go ahead and I am going to create another container. I'm gonna make sure that I center it so I can find it. There we go. I'm gonna pull it into this next section here. And I am going to quick add image. I'm gonna scale it, change image, and then we're gonna pull in our little white car here. All right. Now you guys see that there's white. This is the way that I cropped it. So have no fear. We're just gonna create or click on the container. We put it in and we are just going to change that background to white. See how easy that is? <laughs> easy day. All right, next we're gonna go into creating this. It's just super easy. We're just going to right click, quick add, container. Use our alignment tools to find I don't know where it just pasted. So I'm gonna do it again, right click, quick add, container. And we're gonna center, there we go. I'm gonna, it fell right into place. I want it on the top here and the bottom. I'm going to go back to my inspector, go to design, background, should be that nice little 181818 hex code. And we are now inside of this going to add our image of the Tesla logo. Again, can't see where it popped in, so I'm gonna use my alignment tools to figure out where the image was placed. Change, let's see. I'm gonna grab this Tesla photo. And by the way, um, if you guys want to know how to upload your media, um, I know that's not something I cover in these videos, but um, if you want to upload the assets that I have given you guys, which are the links down in the description, it's the Dropbox link. I've given you all these assets for free that you can use and follow along with me for this challenge. But you'll basically just go to Add Elements, go to Media, My Uploads, press this button, and you can just upload all the files that I've given to you right here. All right. So up next, I am going to place this Tesla logo exactly where I want it. All right, so I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna go to my alignment tools, make sure that this is aligned center. And I actually want it to dock to the bottom here. Let's see, I think it's overlapped. Here we go. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a grid for this container. Because if you see this, if I tried to dock this, right? It tried to dock all the way to the bottom. I don't want that. I want it to dock halfway. I always want Tesla to be on the top half. So to do that, I'm gonna just do a, and there's multiple ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna do it my way for this. Apply grid. We're gonna do a one by two. And now you can see that when I dock it, it docks immediately to this half portion here. And we might change that later. All right, so we have a couple more to go. We have one, two, three more bits to do. We are going to right click, quick add, container, Adrian says, how do you choose where it's best to dock to? That's really a, I mean, that's honestly, it's a good question. It's all about um, where would you like things to stay um, when you start pushing and pulling a site. So for example, if we just take a look at this menu here, um, and this is, I'm gonna start with the menu just because we have, we finished this really early on. So I'm gonna just do not display um, for our section here so we can pay attention to the menu. And we haven't made it 100% fully responsive, but um, it, enough. So what I have here is basically these things are truncating down and as we have less and less space, it just goes to more 
um, or the text just goes to more. We can change that if we wanted to. Um, we're actually, when we start going to tablet, we're gonna have the menu uh, or the hamburger menu. And I'll show you guys how to do that. But essentially, if we take a look at my inspector tab, we have this menu docked to the right. We have this menu docked to the right and we have our logo docked to the left. What that means is when we start changing the size of our website, you see how this menu stays to the right? This menu stays to the right of uh, this little line here or this grid. And you see how this logo stays to the left? That's what a dock or that's what docking does. It says, hey, <laughs> when we get squeezed, you stay over there. When we get squeezed, you stay over here and you stay there. That's literally what docking does if I wanted to change it, for example, right? Let's say I wanted Tesla for whatever reason to be on, rather on the left, I want it on this right side of uh, this particular gridded section. So I'm gonna left, right align it and I'm gonna dock it to the right. So now rather than docking over here and staying over here, it's gonna dock and stay there when we start pulling it, you see? It sticks to this vector, or this area, rather than this area when it gets squeezed. So I hope that answers your question. Adrian, if it does, put a thumbs up in the chat or a one. If not, uh, just let me know. <laughs> All right, let's go back and push this section back on and let's continue. And by the way, if this has also already been super helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe and join our Discord, ladies and gentlemen. The coffee's getting cold. All right, so let's continue. Um, I am going to make this container white. Design, background, white. And we are going to add a, I believe, first off, we do need an image in here. And second of all, I don't recall if I've made a grid here. So let's see, we have a container in here. And this container does, okay, I did split it by a lot, okay. So I did make this container have a lot of grids just so I can manipulate these, uh, these text areas easily when it gets down to responsive time. So what I am going to do, I am going to apply a grid and for right now, we're just gonna start with a one by three. Um, maybe we'll need one a little bit later, you know what? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give myself one more. There we go. Okay. And from here, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm gonna drag this over here. Duplicate, drag this over here. And I'm duplicating using Control D. If you're on Mac, it is Command. Command D. All right, so next we're gonna copy this. We have, oh, don't duplicate that, nope. <laughs> we're gonna grab model three. We're gonna pull this right here. We're gonna steal these right here. Perfect. We're gonna make this two lines just by pulling this down. Boom. And one thing I did forget to do is I wanted to dock these bits here. So I'm gonna make sure that these are all docked to the left so that when we do get, when we start going responsive, um, these words stay exactly where they're at and have this exact amount of spacing from the left of this container. And if you did see this, um, the margin is in percentage. We actually don't want that, we want it in pixels. So we're gonna go 26 pixels for now. We're just gonna change it from uh, percentage to pixels and we don't need to know what the number is, it just automatically does that calculation for us. Adrian says, good explanation boss. Well, thank you, my good friend. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. All right, next we have our little piece here. Okay, just trying to get these situated in a nice nice spot that I'd like. And of course, you all can always, you know, 
if you want to have the same exact spacing all that from element to element you can definitely sit there and do the math and calculations for that right now we're a little limited on time so i'm just trying to show you guys how to do the grids on grids and you know get everything in here all right so within this container now i do want to add a image quick add image and we're going to change this to our beautiful red tesla we're going to go to the cog as you guys can see it's cut off anytime you have a cut off issue like this just go ahead and hit the cog button and hit reset image Perfect. And now I'm going to scale this to the size I desire. And I'm going to use my alignment tools to kind of help me out here. So I'm going to do right align and just make sure it's at the bottom, just like that. And I'm also going to make sure that it is docked. So I'm going to select my image. It's docked to the bottom and the right. So it'll always stick to that bottom corner. Perfect. And I do think later, I think what I realized is that I did need to get um, or have a uh, basically two columns, but we'll, we'll figure that out. If we do, we'll go ahead and make it. Um, but I want you guys to see the failure so you guys can see how I correct things. All right, we got two more main sections. Let's see, do I make this in container? Nope, it's just the image. So next thing, I'm going to fill in this corner here. Quick add, con nope, not container. I'm just container happy today. That's all we've been making. So <laughs> quick add image, pull this right in here. Scale it, change image. We're gonna get the steering wheel, update. And now for this right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this container up here, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna just pull it right here. Squeeze it in, increase the size, ta-da, and I'm just gonna change the background. So, and this is kind of what I was trying to show you guys yesterday, but um, for some reason I wasn't able to, to show you guys, but there is a way to create components and masters and um, <clears throat> I'll have to show you guys share with you all how to do that and you also can find that in the Academy X but I don't want to dive too much into that uh, at the moment but you can either just copy and paste and just kind of like how I did or if you're gonna use it multiple times you can create uh, components essentially in masters and I'm just changing all of this stuff to the text to be white boom and I'm gonna change this to white as well all right and now what I'm going to do here all right we got all that and I'm gonna close I'm gonna go to a, my section I'm just gonna select the whole section here I'm gonna check something so we have minimum height 800 I for right now I'm just going to do 100 VH. Okay. Give us more room. And now I'm going to make this section right over here. So I'm going to take this container that I have and I'm going to duplicate it yet again. And I'm just going to pull it on over here. I'm going to make sure that it scales to that whole spot. And I'm going to delete. Let's see, I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna take this up here, this container, and I'm gonna pull it right up here. And I am going to take this, shop all models. I'm gonna double click in here, take this. Paste. Let me find what size I have for this. This is 25. I think these are 22. So I'm gonna just make this 22 just to fit with all of the previous menus over here. Or excuse me, headers. And I'm gonna do medium, Gotham medium. And I'm going to move this arrow. Let's see, how should we do it? Let's 
So I'm going to take this, I'm going to squeeze this in with the text. And again, I'm going to edit the container that we have here. I'm going to make our text 100%. As you guys can see, when things get percentages, um, you want to make sure that for, for, this, for this instance, I want my text to fill 100% of the space of the container that I put it in. And then in the section that I put it in. So if you guys just saw, it was about only taking up 79, which is why I was getting crammed. So I switched it to 100%. I might even give it a little bit more space. And this arrow, I'm going to change it from fluid to fixed because I want it a particular size. I don't want it to keep scaling. So I'm going to do, let's do 25 by 25. And let's put it in the center of that section that it's in. For now. We can worry about it later. Or maybe we'll put it, maybe we'll put it at the top. Top align it. And maybe we'll use our arrow keys just to push it down to where I like it. And it basically creates the margin automatically for us here. So that looks good to me. And all I have to do here now is take off the background here. Edit text. We're going to go to our nice little black we were using. Same with our arrow here. Design. Boom. ta -dow. All right. So we're pretty much, we're, we're there. <laughs> we have completed desktop in basically 50 minutes. The rest, I'm gonna show you guys how this works and I hope you guys can follow along because there is a lot of juiciness here and this kind of goes into your, uh, your question, Adrian. And before we do that, I do need to, there's a little space here and until we figure that out, I am going to make the background Let's see, image, container, section. I wanna make this. Huh. Maybe I need to make the page. Maybe this is the page color that's showing through. Let's try it out. Nope, it's a container somewhere. Let's see if we can figure this out. Section, background, no, it's not that. Let's take a look at this. Nope, not that container. All right, here's the gray. We're gonna make it that black here. Okay, gives us a nice space. Or a, a nice little illusion that it's not getting cut off there. All right, so now let's play with tablet. And now, as soon as you probably hit this button, you guys are like, my entire site is done. What did I do? This is really easy and this is why grids are awesome. So check this out. I'm gonna go to my layers here so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. If you guys remember, the first section that we made, if we take a look at the grids, it was side by side. We don't want side by side anymore. We want top and bottom. So all I'm gonna do is hit that, boom. <laughs> Most, a lot of problems were just fixed. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this top container here, which is, I'm gonna name it so I don't keep clicking on the wrong thing. This is uh, main container. And I'm gonna call this just mini containers. All right, so our mini containers, they're not looking too bad. There, there's very few things that we need to, you know, change here, which are adjusting this, making sure this is centered, uh, we are going to increase the size of this container so it does not squeeze our words, there we go, again, same thing here, we're just going to give our text more space to breathe we're going to correct where it is docking. We're going to move this up. We're just using our arrow keys. And we can hold shift and move it as well too. It, move, it makes it move a little bit, a little bit faster. 
So again, we have percentage here. We don't want percentage, we want pixels for margin. Reason being is because, at least for me, and there's no right or wrong answer, this is very challenging to make things, fix things when, uh, there's a lot more variability when percentage is in play. Okay, and as we can see here, this photo is overcrowding this text. So I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm gonna pull the text right underneath our text here, perfect. And I'm pretty much just, essentially when it comes to, if you've set all of your grids up correctly, the rest of the breakpoints are a matter of just, hey, I just want things to look like this. So you're dragging, you're pulling, you're redocking things. Um, you shouldn't have to recreate your design from scratch. Okay, change grid layout, advanced. I'm gonna move some of this stuff here. For example, like this container, it's kind of smushed, so we're just gonna give it a new, um, new size. I'm gonna make it even larger because the arrow here is getting a little bit smashed. And I'm gonna make this container the same size as this container. So I'm gonna just go here to my inspector. We have a width of 60. We're just gonna do 60, 60%. 60 same thing here, 60%. And I think, all right, so now we have to deal with this. We're gonna go to the section and let's go to a layer, make sure which one, which section we're actually talking about here. All right, we want to select the main container, which is this top part here. And this is where things kind of get a, li a little tricky. So I'm gonna try this out. I do, I wanna undock everything here. Undock, 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 undock. Reason being is I want to edit this height here. I wanna edit 500 pixels of height. I might give myself, you know what, I, let's try this. I'm gonna do 100 VH. Let's see what happens here. 100 VH which is a 100% viewport. And I'm going to start moving some of these things here, let's see. So we have more space up top here. We have our container. All right, trying to figure out some things, guys. All right. So I'm actually, rather than 100 VH, let's do, let's do 100, 800 pixels. Let's play with that first. Let's go with this container. I'm gonna un, like mi mi minimize it and move that just really quickly. Cause I'm trying to figure out what happened here. There's a little bit of an overlap. So let's see. Our height here for our entire section. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, so this entire section that we made, right? If we remember, this entire section, or these two areas here, was made from this entire section that was made to be 100% VH, which is fine for desktop, but it is not fine for tablet. And so what's happening here is this section is still 100% VH, but it is smashing all this content. And as you, it, it, you can see, this section ends right here. So we need to make it bigger. So we're gonna do, let's see, two, we'll do one, we'll do auto. Let's see what that does. There we go. So now out, auto incorporates all of the content, which is, which is nice. All right, so now I can go back to what I was doing before. Now let's do this very quickly. I still see this main container is still pretty, it's pretty large. Now, maybe if I do 500, I'm trying to figure out why is this still underneath this other section? Maybe it's because it's underneath, let's see. Let's switch it, ah, there we go, okay. So it was just a layer thing, just like in any other design program, guys, <laughs> make sure that this main container is on top of your other content. Even then, you know, there is still some overlap and we have to figure that out. So let's see what's going on. 
Let's try to give our section more space here. Let's just try to do an obnoxious number here. 2,000 pixels. All right, so we've, we've moved, we've given some space to everything. Now let's try to figure this out. So I'm gonna bring this to the top. Okay, we're good there. And I am going to, <laughs> Lisa says that's happened to me too. Yeah, this, so a lot of this journey, what we're doing together is like, things will happen. They're like, even in regular, if you, in any design thing or you're prototyping, you have to figure out, okay, this is my vision, but this thing just happened and it's not working out. We have to kind of figure it out. C Web says negative margins. Ah, I wonder if that's the case. I wonder if that's the case. So I'm going to just pull this down just a little bit. I'm going to get our container here. I want 100%. And I'm going to put it right back in this section that we had it. There we go. The container has negative margins. All right, let's see what we got. So main container, negative margins. I wonder if it was this. So what happens if we zero that out? Oh, you know what? You are correct, my good sir. Or ma'am. Let's see. Let's put this back to auto and see what we got. Wow. <laughs> See, the teamwork makes the dream work. See, this is what we do. Cweb web 1988, you win today's awesome award. Thank you very much. All right, so that, that, that works out. All right, so next we're gonna mess with this second part. Mini containers, let's do, let's figure this out. So I'm gonna undock everything here. And we're gonna give more space to this. So I'm gonna, let's do 800 pixels for our bottom. Here we go. And everything very nicely gives itself all of its own space. And uh, that's pretty that's pretty much our tablet, guys. We will fix the menu in just a second. And before I do that, I'm gonna go here. Change grid layout, advanced mode. I'm gonna pull this up just like this so we can pull those buttons up a little bit. Hit done, good to go. All right, so now for our menu, we are going to not display all of these. So clicking these, don't display, don't display. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to plus. We need, we need C-Web in our Discord. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's see. We're gonna go to menus. We're gonna go to hamburger menus like this. And we are going to just pull, eh, I wanna use this one today. I'm gonna just pull this menu over here. I'm gonna make sure that it is white so we can see it. And we're going to align this to the right and make sure it's centered. And we're gonna open the menu just so we can see what we have in here. Oop, let's open it again, all right. So we have all of our first menu stuff in here. Now, if we wanted to add a conjunctive menu where it basically just had everything that we uh, had in our previous two men menus in one, what we're gonna do is open menu. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do, there should be a manage here. <laughs> yeah. Cweb says, "Yeah, I've never used Discord." Well, my friend, keep coming to the, uh, keep coming to the chat or the challenges because that was extremely helpful. All right, so let's see. For whatever reason, this menu. Let me think here. Open menu. Oh, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna click here, manage menu. And I do want to create a new menu. So I'm gonna manage site menus, add new menu, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say tutorial mobile menu. Perfect. And I'm gonna add all the links here. So I'm gonna unselect Tesla home and I'm gonna select home, just everything, okay? There we go. So now these are all the, we don't need menu because that's a little redundant. Okay, 
So there we go. There's our mobile menu, and we're looking good. We're looking sweet. We're looking delicious. All right, next, we're going to go to mobile. And this is where I believe uh, a lot of... A lot of people had questions, especially when there's like, Brandon, my page is scrolling horizontally, how do I fix that? I got you. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna start off in our section here. Okay. And we're just gonna take one thing at a time. I'm gonna just do a time check, I know we're over. But projects like these, I think they're gonna take an hour and a half. So we're learning, we're seeing how long these projects take, and I just thank you guys for all of your patience in regards to just, you know, one, really digging these, two, doing the challenges, and three, you know, um, just growing with us. So I, I, I appreciate you all. And let me get another, let me sneak another. The coffee is ice cold now. <laughs> all right. So we are going to, first off, I think this image is what is bringing this all the way out here. And of course, these as well. So we're going to do we're going to start with two things. So first off, I am going to undock this entire image because what it's doing is saying, hey, image, I am going to be this spread out. And as you guys can see, when we do that, the width is 746. We don't want all that. Um, we're going to see what happens if we do auto. Nope. All right, we're going to do 100%. Also, nope. Okay, let's figure out what's going on here. Um, we're going to go to container. All right, that's also thickums. Yeah, our container is 100% width, and then our section. Okay, let's start here. Let us do, I'm gonna undock this really quick and see what happens. I'm gonna go to pixels. Okay. For some reason, that container was like really far out there. I have it has no business being out there. So I want to bring this in really quick and I'm going to do 100% see what happens there. Oh, it still brings it out. Okay, so what I think is going on is that let's start down here first. This might fix it. Adrian says sometimes I feel like the mobile editor changes my desktop stuff too even though they say it's bottom down editing and not bottom up. So Adrian, it depends on what happens in what you're editing so for example if I were to delete um, I think if I try to delete this container it, I think it happens with parent and child things like I don't I'm still learning this myself but I'm realizing there's the majority of things that you change um, will not affect higher uh, breakpoints but there's certain things if, in terms of like, if you move content, you'll actually get a message like, hey, do you want to delete this? Or do you want to remove, uh, you know, move this somewhere else? So it'll give you like a little notification. Those type things will actually change higher breakpoints. If we, you know, if we fall into one of those problems today, um, I will, I'll call it out. And so you guys can, we'll all see it together. But first I do want to set up this uh, mini container, let's see we have it super far out here and that's not what we want. We want to go to change grid layout and right here we have a three by three. We want everything to stack. So I'm gonna do one by nine and for some odd reason, I wonder why these widths are going to 749 rather than, what happens if I do 100%? Okay, if I did 100% it snaps back to where it should be. All right, and I'm gonna give everything a little bit more space. As you guys can see, some of these things are a little bit outside of the container. So I'm gonna do auto, see what happens here. Perfect. And what auto does is basically, to my understanding, <laughs> okay, if there are things inside of a container, and let's say everything in that container stacked is like a thousand pixels long. Um, but in this case, where I had it, I basically constrained the container to 800. All of the assets that I have stacked in there together are a thousand, but I made my container 800. So there's like spillage over the container. So setting it to auto will basically be like, hey, how many things do I have in this container? Oh, there are a thousand, there's a thousand um, pixels in here. So I'm just going to automatically jump to a thousand pixels. 
Lisa says, what is the main section set at? The main section is set at, and we're gonna go back to that because we, we needed to fix this first or this bottom container, this mini container, because that is what was stretching the site to be horizontal. Now we're gonna go and fix the top portion. So we're gonna go back to our main piece here. Now we're gonna do 100% width. Oh, why is it still doing that? Oh, I did 200, my bad guys. Okay, 100, okay, I was about to like, be like, man, they're gonna tell me in the chat that I'm a liar. <laughs> but no, now it is 100% width. And basically, let's see, I think there's still some things out here. What do we need to fix? Aha, the button. Okay, so once we pull that button in, we should be good. And we're gonna do that by selecting this container, change grid layout, boom. We're gonna do stacked. And change, I'm gonna do advanced mode. I'm gonna squeeze. I'm actually going to go over to my inspector and actually make this. Um, I'm gonna undock these things so I can actually edit the height of this. I'm gonna do 200 pixels, perfect. And I'm gonna center these here. I'm going to drag this title as it should be. Center. And I think Lorraine or Lisa, one of you guys uh, asked this question about how to edit photos so that they are cropped in a way that you would like. So this is not how I would like this photo to be cropped. I actually would like to see the front of the car. So I'm gonna select this image. Boom. And I'm gonna click this focus point and I'm gonna point it directly at the front of the car and there we go so now we get to see the front of the car here and for this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this button to the bottom and as you guys can see there's a couple of things that are miss uh, they are not next to the things that they should be so this is where we're gonna kind of rearrange some things. First off, let me go ahead and center this puppy. So shop all, we want above this. We're gonna change, we're gonna move around some things. So I'm gonna pop this out. I'm gonna pop this out. And I'm gonna move these to different sections. So I'm gonna move this up. And this is the stuff that shouldn't affect your uh, upper breakpoints, if that makes sense. Boom. And let's see, we have model X. What's missing from this is this image here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move this puppy down. We actually might have to move it back up. Um, and then our model, we're gonna move this down, pop that up. We're gonna take this, whole container, pop it out of that, move it right next to the section it should be next to. We're gonna scale this red car up. Make this two lines, beautiful. Lorraine says, okay, thanks on focus of photo. Okay, all right, Lorraine, so it was you. <laughs> I'm glad, all right. So I'm just getting all this stuff into position. Moving this stuff up. Pop this out. Move this up. Boom. And there is, what, is, what was this container for? Okay, so I'm gonna change grid layout, advanced, and we no longer need this, this is empty. So I'm gonna click on this, delete row. And let's see, I think I can delete this row as well. All right, and now I'm going to squeeze this in. And I'm gonna give this a particular size here. I'm gonna do, let's do 300 pixels. 200, hit done. 
I'm gonna undock this. There we go. I'm gonna go back into the container here. I was wondering why the, the, the scale wasn't actually moving. So I'm gonna give this 400 pixels here for our Tesla. Fill this, perfect. And just double checking our sections here. We're looking pretty good. All right, so there is, let's check this. C-Web says when you delete the row, it adds the space to the row above it. Got it. Wait, was that a question? When you delete the row, it adds the space to the row above it. Yes. I think you're confirming <laughs> what just happened. I was just like, actually, that was a good addition. Thank you. I couldn't, send it, I couldn't have said it better. All right, let's see. Dima says the red car take two rows if you delete does it affect in the other desktop version? Let me see. The red car takes two rows. So if I delete this, we should be fine. But um, let's take let's 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 go backwards. So what I'm going to do here, and there is a minor, I'm going to show you guys this minor tweak that I made um, because from this site or from desktop to tablet, there is some smushing that I don't really like. As you guys can see this, I, I don't like all that. So what I did here, I'm just going to go to full desktop. I'm going to click these three buttons here. I'm going to customize breakpoints. And what I did was like, okay, when I start squeezing things, when do things start getting ugly? <laughs> when do I not like them? And it's around, uh, there's more customization we can do here actually. So let's do this. I'm going to set contain, I'm gonna to go to this container and rather than fluid, I'm gonna to go to fixed because I don't want that, I don't want these things to scale yet. I'm gonna do the same thing to this. I'm gonna go fixed. I don't want it to scale. And I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Container. Inspector. Fixed. All right, let's see what we got. So scaling. All right, we're good. All right, this looks a little, little off. So what I'm gonna do there as well is I'm gonna set that to fixed. I don't want it to scale. Fixed. All right, test it out. Pull this in. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we have some things here. Let's go ahead and fix that. Go back to this. I'm gonna give this stuff more space. Okay, I'm gonna center, that, center them. Giving them more space basically means uh, it'll have more room. It won't. It won't compress super fast. All right, boom. This compresses really quickly, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to give this more room here. I wonder if we can do something with this. I'm going to undock this stuff here. I wonder if we can do fluid, and let's try... I wonder if we do 80%, what happens? I'm gonna go back to desktop. Reset image. Make sure it's centered here. Scale this in. Much love, C-Web, C you're doing things, man. <laughs> Thank you for helping us in the chat. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get this. Let's see, I wonder if having it as a percent will actually help it scale nicely. All right, good. Okay, so now I can find a, a little breakpoint 
where I want everything to go to tablet. And I think where I want that to happen is kind of around, we're gonna do a little bit early. We're gonna do it around like 1580. So I'm gonna go back to the three dots. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna type in 1580 pixels, hit enter. And so what that does is it makes our site, oh, we didn't, we didn't optimize for this guys. <laughs> Let's, let's undo that. I did this earlier, but essentially what I was trying to do was make it jump to the tablet version. And it seems like there is a width constraint here. So let's, let's go ahead and figure this out. We're gonna go to mini container here. We have a width. We just want this 100%. There we go. This needs to be we're going to reset this image here, center, center. See what it says, I've just spent time running into similar problems. Well, hey, the more the merrier, guys. <laughs> we, uh, you know, this is why we have these type of conversations because we get to, you know, other people have pieces of the puzzle that we haven't all run into. All right, so now I think I can get this to work. So I'm going to go back to our three dots. And I'm going to do 1580 again and go done. And so what this should do is at 1580 width, it should automatically switch to our tablet version. And we do have to fix some of these things here. We're just going to optimize it. Okay. So we're going to go to our mini container. We're gonna do height. Let's see, what happens if we do auto? And I want, you know what? Let's see if we do 900 pixels, what happens there? Cause I do want more space for these things here. Let's keep trying. Let's do, let's do 1200 pixels. Let's see what that gives us. All right, 1200 looks good. All right, and again, I'm gonna adjust this and I think I'm just gonna set this to fixed because we're having that same kind of problem that we were having with it kind of adjusting and cropping itself. I'm gonna see what happens if we go to, all right, this is looking good. This is still looking good. And then it snaps to mobile. And there is a little bit. This looks fine, but if we start pulling this in, there is a little bit of overage with this image. And let's see if we can fix that. Yep, Editor X is 100% free. I know Adrian says C Web is secretly a Wix employee. I went under. I was like, I bet that's uh, dough. I was like, he's he's definitely helping out today, and I appreciate that. All right, let's figure out this one list last piece here, which is I believe I wouldn't have. I wonder what happens if I don't display this. If this fixes, nope. It looks like our image, our our buttons are part of the problem. Our width should be 100%. There we go, okay. All right, so the buttons were basically my problem, okay. And Adrian, back to your question about uh, responsive text. There's one, of thing, there's one of two things that you can do. You can either change the font size of what it is you're displaying from breakpoint to breakpoint. For example, I can do, what was this originally? 65, I'll do 60 for now. Or you can do this scale text where essentially it will give you two ranges. And you can have basically a minimum text size, which we can do, let's do, uh, let's start with 55. And then we'll go to, we'll go to 65. And so as we scale this, it's very minimal. But this text is scaling. Let me just set it to a, a, a ridiculous size. So let me just do 80. 
and let me do let's do 30 so you guys can actually see that this moving so the text will actually scale with the viewport here and it's going between what we have set the 30 pixels and the 80 pixels okay but sometimes again this is something that I don't typically use yet or use a lot of so I basically stick with creating new font sizes per breakpoint if that makes sense how did that get to be shop all malls when did we do that <laughs> I'm just going to set everything back to where it was 65 all right perfect all right so we're looking pretty good guys i there's a couple of things here where we can definitely fix them up but we're we're looking really good guys we can and this is just tweaking from here if you guys want to come in here go to these containers set a fixed width to them and from here if you're like oh this looks really good set fixed it's 159 pixels and just set that to all of your other things here go to container go to 159 px boom I, i'm feeling really confident about this and i i think even for this container i'm going to change the grid i am going to delete the grid and i'm going to just center this in this spot here perfect awesome so there we have it guys we have our beautiful tesla oh hold on fluid all right let's let's go back all right we have fluid let's go to fixed <laughs> let's try to save ourselves from expanding images all right there we go boom all right we're still looking good we're still looking hot all right we're still looking good good boom this, this was a good day guys we did full responsive website Tesla from start to finish and I hope you guys had an amazing time uh, doing all of this. I will share this with you all in our Discord. If you haven't joined, link down in the description. It is where you guys will get all of our announcements for challenges in the future. Get amazing prizes for submitting your daily creative challenges in our Discord. And for those of you who just popped in, I'll just show you guys again. Um, to publish your site, you're going to go to this publish button right here publish it will ask you um, I've already published it so this is the name challenge Four. we can go ahead and view the site and we're looking we're looking pretty fire guys we are I'm happy today we're looking good we can squeeze it tada Actually, this was this was the uh, we didn't make the one um, we didn't make the site or the page that I made today. We didn't make that home, so we were literally looking at another page. So let's go to settings, set home. There we go. Publish. We were looking at my old my old one view site, and here we go. I still think this is the old one. This is not the right menu. <laughs> Hold on, let's see if we can just go to settings. SEO basics, go to URL. All right, there we go. This this looks much better. All right, boom, mobile. We're looking hot. We're looking hot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today. Again, remember to publish your site and say, send it in our Discord in challenge and drop your projects here. I do want to shout out, we had Dima, we had Geek Girl LV, and we had many others. Lorraine uh, put some really awesome projects in here, and I just want to, there was a couple I actually want to showcase. So let me just bring them all up. Two, three, and four. We'll just pull them all up. And I really thought they were really awesome. You guys definitely did the reveal feature that we were doing and our nice little, uh, what's gonna call it? Just getting some hover animations in there. So I loved it. Excellent job, guys. You each did something unique. You guys hit the challenge right on, hover effects and some sort of reveal or scrolling feature. 
I loved all of it. And uh, I still have to get to some of you, you guys because you did ask questions, you did have some errors. For example, you know, this line in here. Regardless, you guys did the challenge. I'm really happy that you guys are diving into this. Um, I'm super excited. Like even, you know, Dima, I love this. You got the project. Really the only thing I think that could help you is uh, the reason, or what I did was this eyeball. If you see this, right? This layer that I had, on top, I made it so big that you could not see uh, this white behind it. And I also made, and I'll help you out with this afterwards, um, but I basically made the container or the scrolling ability super short of, you know, this website. It seems as if you have really, your, your container that you're using for scrolling has really big widths and really big heights. So I would suggest that you shorten them so you have uh, very limited scrolling ability so your eye stays like this and like this so you can really only scroll once or twice up and down or once or twice left and right so with that said ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for hanging out don't forget to like this video subscribe and uh drumill did i did i answer your question about publishing i hope i did uh, lorraine says amazing and adrian says how do we support the channel brandon are you doing membership soon the way to support the channel, my friend, is to join our Discord. That is where I will be doing every month two weeks of daily creative challenges with Editor X. And that's how we're going to make the community grow, guys. That, doing the challenges, and doing amazing things with me every month for two weeks. And uh, yeah, guys, there are going to be more amazing things to come. And I hope this was exciting for you. So please don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and come hang out in Discord. And uh, all the links for all those are down in the description. And don't forget to sign up for Editor X today. So with that said, thank you, C-Web. You were hanging out and helped all of us. Thank you so much. Adrian, thanks for hanging out. Lorraine, Lisa, Dima, Drew Mill. Uh, you know, you guys are amazing. And I can't wait to continue doing more cool things like this and seeing you guys grow each and every day together. All right. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And... Uh, I was about to say Snow Dogs, but um, I'm going to go check out that song, Lorraine. And uh, yeah, Snow Patrol. All right, guys, have a great day. Peace. Dope responsive websites like this and even this for you and your clients within just minutes. First off, you can achieve all this and much more in the powerful no-code platform, Editor X. On these dates, I'll be hosting live daily creative challenges on YouTube to teach you the fundamentals of Editor X and how to create the exact responsive websites you see here. All the way from start to publishing the website. If this sounds of interest to you and you want to improve your Editor X skills, join me live each and every month to get inspired by what amazing things we will create together during our creative challenges. As well as get your questions answered live while we work together, click the link below to sign up and get notified when the challenges begin, and I will see you in our Discord. See you then.